afternoon, everyone. Um, thanks, everyone, for accommodating change in schedule, particularly the directors. Um, good afternoon. Before I call this meeting to order, I'll note for the record that I will serve as the acting chair for today's meeting. I now call to order the meeting of the directors of the New York State Urban Development Corporation doing business as Empire State Development for Thursday, August 17th, 2017. As noted on the agenda posted to the internet, we welcome public comment on the items on our agenda to ensure maximum opportunity for participation. Speakers representing themselves may speak for up to two minutes and those representing groups for up to four minutes. At this time, I'll ask the directors whether anyone has any potential conflict of interest with respect to any of the items on the agenda. Howard, I just say briefly, as I do periodically, I'm an officer of Marshall McLennan. I'm not aware of any conflict, and I've asked Liz and the other members of the staff to let me know if there is any conflict that they identify. Okay, great. Thank you. The first item on today's agenda is the approval of the minutes of the June 29th, 2017 and July 27th. 2017 directors meeting any questions comments additions or deletions with regard to these sets of minutes is there a motion to approve both sets Move. thank you second thank you all in favor aye, aye. any opposed great uh, matt watson will present uh, the next two items which relate to the adoption of guidelines for two separate grant programs matt thank you good afternoon Matt Watson from the Division of Science, Technology, and Innovation. I'm here today to ask for the board to approve two sets of guidelines. Uh, these guidelines are made possible by two federal grants that we recently won. One is through the Department of Commerce for $1.2 million and one through the Department of Defense for $1.5 million. These guidelines will create programs that will enable us to assist companies. All the grants given underneath these programs will be in the range of five to $50,000. Uh, the first set of guidelines that I'll be reviewing quickly for you is the Manufacturing Technology Advancement Grant, and its <coughs> funding will go into that pot of money for or up to 300000 And the purpose of that is to connect companies to federally funded technology hubs. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Manufacturing USA Institutes, but those are the specific hubs that will be connected companies to. And the purpose is really to increase companies' profitability through advancement of technology. Eligible applicants will be primarily manufacturers. So that's a quick overview of that one. I don't know if you guys want to review each one independently or vote on them as a package. We do it together. Okay. Keep going okay. See if there's any questions. Okay. Second set of guidelines is uh, for the Defense Industry Assistance Program. We're making up to $700,000 available through that program. And the purpose will to be to make uh, defense-related companies more resilient to downturns in defense spending. Um, we will be assisting companies with identifying additional markets, civilian-type markets, to diversify their portfolio. Eligible applicants will primarily be companies that are already part of the De Department of Defense supply chain. Okay. Are, are there any questions uh, for Matt from the directors on uh, these two sets of guidelines? Are these new programs, Matt? Yes, there will be new programs. Okay. Do we apply for them? Yep. yep. We they are competitively awarded through the um, federal agencies. Okay, great. What is the criteria that you have for a company to apply? Uh, for the first one, you have to be a manufacturing company, uh, preferably under 500. Preference is going to be given to f under 500 employees. Uh, we will also extend grants to organizations that help manufacturers. So if it's somebody that wants to help multiple manufacturers at one time, like a nonprofit, <coughs> that we they can apply as well. And we help manufacturers in a lot of different ways, right? I mean, we have these recurring programs that we do. Why don't you just talk about that for 30 seconds? Sure. Uh, for the past 20 years or so, our division has been the designated Manufacturer Extension Partnership Center for the state. Uh, with that, we competitively award 10 to 11, it's recently 11 is why I said 10 to 11, uh, centers to provide services to manufacturers in an effort to make them more competitive and to grow. And by growing, the intent is for them to hire more people. So it can be introduction of new technologies, improving their processes, things of that nature. Great. Any other questions? Any comments from the public? Is there a motion to approve these two Move. guidelines? Second. Thanks, Derek. Thank you, Peter. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I have uh, just a few items uh, that I'll cover. One, uh, we had a good event 
um, this morning. It was just marking the continued progress uh, of the Penn Farley complex, particularly the Moyna Moynihan train hall, and Mora Moynihan was there. And uh, some of you may know this was uh, originally the idea of Senator Daniel Patrick Moynihan to convert that post office building into a new train station going back to like 1993. It was then named after him, I think, in 99. It's been a long time coming. This project has, um, you know, been bumping along, but obviously uh, the governor gets things done, and it was great to, you know, see the progress and the construction. I should also point out that. You know, as a um, Long Islander, growing up in Long Island, I know how important this project is to uh, commuters, people who use the Long Island Railroad, and I use that as an opportunity to recognize James Medore, who's with us today, the um, accomplished journalist from Newsday. My first job, I know this is of no interest to anyone, my first job was the Newsday paper boy. So I have a <laughs> uh, connection to James and the... <laughs> I did. did I, I did. It was my first introduction to capitalism. It was, <laughs> it was excellent. Collecting every Saturday. Um, anyway, I just wanted to welcome James uh, in person. And um, a few other uh, miscellaneous. We have begun announcing, the governor has begun announcing uh, the winners of the uh, DRI the uh, downtown revitalization initiatives, and we were back to Long Island and Hicksville recently because they won. Um, and we were in Watkins Glen, and that was exciting. And we had a we hosted an I Love New York sponsored a NASCAR race. I don't know if any of you saw the NASCAR race, but um, it was it was good excitement. I had the opportunity to go. Um, we. We're in Jamestown announcing a $500,000 I Love New York campaign to promote the National Comedy Center, which you might recall has been a, one of the priority projects for the Western New York uh, region. And we've done a number of um, infrastru other infrastructure um, events, including the groundbreaking on Delta's $4 billion new facility at LaGuardia Airport. Uh, we did some economic development uh, announcements, the Tessie Plastics expansion in Onondaga. We did an event there. We did finally close on the redevelopment project of Arthur Kill Correctional Facility. Uh, you might recall uh, that project will be um, very exciting Broadway stages, which will invest $20 million uh, to developing that uh, facility into a, a, a working film and television production. Um, I had the opportunity to participate in Herkimer, New York, in Tractor Supply. They're building like a million square foot distribution center. This is one of several distribution projects that we've announced in recent years, including Dollar General. I believe there was a Walmart and one other that I'm blanking on. But we've had a number of distribution projects up in the Mohawk Valley. And I should remind everyone that the great New York State Fair opens on August 23rd, and I'll look forward to seeing all of you there every day of the fair. Yeah, right. And um, I also want to, uh, since Joyce is here, uh, uh, say that Congressman Nadler was at the event, and he's been a great partner of the Moynihan um, project, and it was a kind of a celebratory event, and I had the opportunity to see him there, and I congratulate him, and I congratulate you, Joyce, as well. Um, you, I wish I could have been there. Yeah, it was, it was good. Um, with that, I'm going to ask Edwin Lee to present a summary of uh, projects on our agenda. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, the directors will be requested to consider 12 projects today. Uh, totaling $58,896,816 in grants. The projects include five regional council awards and seven discretionary awards. The projects will take place in the capital, central New York, Finger Lakes, Long Island, Mid-Hudson, Southern Tier, and Western New York regions. Leverage over $116 million of additional investment, retain 1,796 jobs, and create 436 jobs in the state. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Edwin. Uh, we'll get into the project section. Jim Fail uh, with Central New York is on the line. Jim, you've got four items, I believe. Good afternoon. Hey. Uh, today, the uh, directors will be asked to approve 
four projects. Uh, the first project is to John Mezzalingua Associates. It's a $5 million grant for a $34 million total project cost to um, renovate, relocate operations from uh, their Maryland, application, uh, Maryland operations to Liverpool, relocating the purchase and uh, purchasing new machinery and equipment, as well as furniture fixture. Uh, the, uh, this led to the creation of uh, 144 uh, or five, five jobs, which they've actually exceeded already. The project has been completed and has the full support of the Regional Council. The second project that the uh, uh, board is looking at is called Paradise Two Companies. This is a $2.315 million grant on a $19.5 million project. Uh, this was a round four CFA pro or, uh, priority project for the council, and this was to acquire and renovate a 213,000 square foot vacant building in the heart of downtown and redevelop the building into a mixed-use complex. This building had been vacant for almost 20 years, right in the heart of downtown. The project is complete, um, almost fully occupied, and um, is looking very good. The third project is called Prima Terra Properties. This is a $1 million grant on a $14.2 million project. It's a round five project, uh, priority project. It has also been completed, and they have um, hired 27 of the 29 jobs that they were supposed to have created. And this was to develop um, what they're calling the crossroad project of Liverpool. It was two major intersections in the suburb just outside of the city, which included the construction of a new Hampton Inn and Suite hotel and the development of four out parcels to lease uh, to national tenants, which can complement the hotel. Finally, the board is looking to approve a $30 million uh, grant to new Northeast U UAS Airspace Integration Research Alliance, otherwise known as New Year. The total project cost uh, for this is uh, $35 million. This is to essentially continue the development of the next phase of the uh, corridor to, to have beyond visual line of sight uh, from uh, about a 50-mile range from Rome, New York, to Syracuse, New York. This is, again, a major step in growing out um, our unmanned uh, air uh, systems uh, initiative up here that's part of our URI. This would be URI funds. Uh, there's an additional $5 million from DASNY which will also go towards um, buying and helping to purchase equipment. Um, so part of the funds will go towards buying and purchasing equipment. There is a, a working capital component of this to help uh, the company be able to go out and hire uh, some in initiatives or individuals to advance this to the next level. Um, and uh, there's also a $5 million um, uh, job closing fund, which will be used to help uh, with the uh, incentivize young uh, emerging companies that are going to hire a smaller number of people that would not, where our um, incentives would not necessarily be able to help as much. Um, and lastly, I did need to point out that uh, in the youth section of the budget, there was uh, inadvertently a uh, 12 million, $12.4 million line item uh, left out, which was associated with the uh, acquisition and additional machinery and equipment. Um, after this meeting, we will adjust, make the adjustments and uh, put the appropriate uh, budget numbers into the corporate record. And I'd be glad to take any questions. Uh, Jim, is there anyone else on the phone regarding the New Air project, do you know? Yes, I do have uh, the, the uh, current uh, CEO, um, Larry Brinker, uh, from New Air. Okay. Larry, do you want to speak to the project at all in your own words in terms of New York? Because this is a big initiative, obviously, in central New York. Uh, sure, I'd be happy to. Um, what this is is a continuation of uh, the effort we started with the award of the uh, FAA uh, UAS designated test site uh, back in 2013. And what, what this corridor will accomplish, it'll give uh, completion to the ability 
for uh, unmanned aerial systems to come test in a certified and uh, verified environment uh, by FAA and, and by NASA. The UTM part of it, the unmanned traffic management part of it, is a, a leading edge technology that uh, has to be perfected in order for companies like Amazon, for example, to do package delivery over long distances. Okay. Um, the Griffiths Air Base, right, is uh, one of how, remind me how many certified um, test sites there are in the country. Right. Griffiths is one of six. Okay. And is, would you describe this as an important piece of the infrastructure for the unmanned aerial system initiative? It, it's essential. The uh, beyond visual line of sight, as Jim mentioned, is the holy grail of unmanned systems. Right now, the use of small unmanned systems is limited to within line of sight of the pilot. Right. Uh, activities like d the delivery and, uh, and long-range uh, flights can't take place until there is uh, beyond visual line of sight. We happen to be sitting in central New York, one of the leading areas of providers of radars and sensors that yep. will go to comprise that unmanned traffic management system. Once we have it in place, we'll be able to test uh, equipment from around the world. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a good to just remind everyone that we pick these initiatives based on the strengths of the regions, the things like location quotients and others that sort of reveal where there's a real density of industry, supply chain, research, technology, uh, and companies that, you know, distinguish that region in that industry. And that's why we pick those industries to kind of help create and foster clusters uh, around it. And you right, recall that Saab uh, Defense uh, recently announced an expansion in central New York. Again, it's all sort of associated with this uh, focus on sensor technology and things of that nature. So. Are there any other um, questions from directors on this new air initiative or some of the development projects or other projects, I think, four that Jim has gone through? Um, I just have a question on the last one on sure. new air. Um, is that a military and a civilian facility then? Uh, this is all for commercial testing. It's all commercial, okay. Yeah, the big opportunity really in this is the commercial applications and whether it's agriculture or bridge inspections or inspections of all kinds of things that's very dangerous or hard to access for people or first response, uh, emergency response to things. Or I know I, we tend to think of it as military and it, you know, maybe it, its yeah. highest profile use in the media has been military and maybe some of its original use, but the commercial application is is potentially really significant. So the North Koreans won't be interested. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hopefully not. Um, any other questions uh, for Jim or Lawrence? Larry, can you explain briefly how the altitudes are going to work? You know, consumers or individuals are up to a certain height, and then Amazon's at the next height. Is there somebody above that? Just Absolutely. The, that, so. the uh, existing FAA air traffic control system uh, is unable to track small aircraft below about 1,000 feet above the ground. So the test corridor will be built so that uh, it can track not only small UAS, but also what we refer to as uncooperative aircraft. doesn't mean they're, they're bad aircraft, just means they're not cooperating in the air traffic control system. They don't have to. Uh, so we can avoid collisions at low altitudes. We'll start the corridor at probably about 400 feet, which is kind of the altitude that's approved right now by FAA, uh, to begin testing, and we'll move that up to 1,000 feet AGL by the, uh, uh, by the time the corridor is finished. Thank you. Other questions? Any comments from the public on any of these four items? Is there a motion to approve all of them? Thanks, Second. Derek. Seconded. Uh, thank you, Joyce. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Okay, gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I'll now ask Chris Shefflin of Western New York Region to uh, present an item related to uh, Buffalo Manufacturing Works. Chris? Thank you, Hart. Good afternoon, everybody. The directors are being requested to approve up to $15 million for a working capital grant from the Buffalo Regional Innovation Cluster Fund, 
or Buffalo Billion II to Edison Welding Institute, which in Buffalo does business as Buffalo Manufacturing Works, or what we call BMW. BMW was established in 2015 as a signature initiative of Buffalo Billion Phase One to help manufacturers identify, test, and implement technologies to create competitive advantage for their products, expand into new markets, boost productivity, and stimulate innovation and growth for our region's manufacturing sector. BMW's work since inception in Buffalo Billion One has focused on three core technical areas supported to date by $18 million of capital equipment and the hiring of 20 staff. Uh, most importantly, BMW has served hundreds of companies over the last few years, many on complicated and multifaceted projects involving advanced automation, which is robotics or cobotics, additive manufacturing, which can be thought of as 3D printing, and materials testing, which uh, is inspection, measurement, and analyses. For Buffalo Billion II, there is a total allocation of $35 million for Buffalo Manufacturing Works, 15 of which is being requested today to facilitate uh, Manufacturing Works growth through the delivery of a comprehensive portfolio of enhancements that will broaden and deepen its long-term impact on Western New York's manufacturing competitiveness. Specifically, BMW will use this capital grant as follows. Um, first, to develop and launch a small and medium-sized manufacturer's innovation capacity building program for up to 250 SMMs over the next three years to participate in assessment, technology and innovation workshops, innovation capacity audits, and ultimately uh, down to the most advanced and pro promising companies for innovation one-on-one -on -one advisory engagement. Uh, second, to expand Buffalo Manufacturing Works STEM Education Additive Manufacturing Learning Lab uh, to include middle and high school students for early engagement, especially with underserved populations, and after school programs to learn advanced manufacturing technologies, improve post-secondary job skills through mentoring and internship, and multiple programs with multiple partners like Buffalo Public Schools, local community colleges, and state universities. At scale, uh, the STEM lab will train two to 300 students per year over the three years for the program. This will serve as a complement to our uh, work signature workforce initiative uh, training center on the currently being built on Buffalo's east side. And uh, finally, uh, Buffalo Manufacturing Works will need to increase staff to deliver these expanded services, uh, adding technical innovation experts, project and program management infrastructure, including business development and community engagement elements. Um, I'll pause here to take questions on the item, and I'll also invite Michael Albrecht, the president of Buffalo Manufacturing Works, to join me in answering questions, uh, should there be any. Great. Um, I'm just going to give a, just a little bit of context. This was one of the Buffalo Billion, original Buffalo Billion focus industries was manufacturing. And, you know, when you looked around the world, really, at best practices to help your manufacturing economy go grow, this Edison Welding, which was in Columbus, Ohio, uh, had done really the best job. And we have uh, started this initiative because we have literally over 1,500 small, medium, and large manufacturers in Western New York. It's still a huge industry. I know we tend to think of the modern economy as being, quote, the information economy, but you still have to actually make things. And we make a lot of things uh, in <coughs> Buffalo and Western New York. So trying to help these companies grow it's like a co-op, in essence, where we're investing in some of the highest end uh, equipment and bringing in PhDs and other engineers to help companies that otherwise wouldn't necessarily be able to afford these types of experiments or equipment or personnel uh, independent of one another. But by doing it in this uh, environment, I think it's been very impactful. And they've of really of the many initiatives uh, that we have launched, this is one of the real signature initiatives. And I give a lot of credit to uh, the person who leads this uni initiative, uh, Michael Ulbrich, and he's with us. Do you want to talk for a couple minutes, Michael, and we'll see if there's any questions about, you know, what you guys are doing and how it's going? Sure, thanks. Um, so Chris covered it well. Um, this is a continuation of uh, a very successful uh, first two and a half years of, of Buffalo Manufacturing Works, and really the identification of a couple of kind of core systemic challenges with the manufacturing base in, in Western New York and how we could address those. So um, small and medium-sized manufacturers, as, as many of you I'm sure know, are really uh, a, a crucial part of the local economy and all throughout the state. 
Um, but really, they're responsible for a lot of the job growth, but um, often underinvest in innovation um, from due to a lack of resources. And so, the program that we're developing, that Chris mentioned, the small and medium-sized manufacturer innovation capacity building program, is really meant to address that head-on and help these companies grow and innovate through, first of all, technology awareness, then adoption, and then ultimately implementation. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the STEM Learning Lab uh, is a program that we've been doing for two years that's been successful and looking to scale that um, from additional technologies of 3D printing and robotics and engaging students from 5th through 12th grade in Buffalo Public Schools and really giving them exposure to uh, these technologies which really get them hooked uh, and, and very engaged and is meant to complement the workforce training uh, center initiatives that are also happening in the region. So happy to take any questions, and I'll pause there. Okay. Any questions for Chris or Michael? Yeah, Joyce. Yeah. Uh, what is the relationship between um, EWI and um, BMW? Is Sure. Uh, Chris, would you like me to go? Yep, go ahead. Okay, sure. Um, BMW is, uh, is part of EWI, so uh, it's the same legal entity. Um, Chris briefly mentioned uh, the, the BMW name is a, a DBA doing business as uh, in Western New York. Um, and the reason for that is to leverage the full infrastructure um, and not duplicate resources such as legal, accounting, HR, finance, um, and which frankly has allowed us to get off to a really strong start in the first uh, two years because we could hit the ground running. Okay, so um, the and so EWI is relocating its own personnel to Buffalo to participate in this effort. Is that correct? Uh, some, yes, correct. Some personnel were relocated, uh, but of the 20 staff that we have hired since we've started, um, I think 17, all but three. Um, have been uh, people that we've either attracted to the region from around the country or graduates from local universities um, in western New York and also in the Rochester area as well. So the, the goal of this is broader. It's not to create an, it's not creating an entity that in itself will be hiring a large number of people. It has a much broader portfolio. Is that correct? Yeah, and its clients yeah. are manufacturers yeah. all around the region. So it's helping, like Michael, I mean, I don't think we can identify all the companies, but um, a typical project, give an example without referencing a name of like a typical project that you may be helping a company with. Sure. Um, and so yes, it is a, a platform that is meant to be helping a broad number of manufacturers, so you're correct on that. Um, a representative project would be a... Um, uh, recently, a 75-person manufacturer in um, the southern part of the western New York region in an economically challenged area, um, new ownership, and the company was uh, looking to really increase their productivity through technology or close down the operation. So we worked with them to uh, come up with a technology blueprint, uh, which helped them understand all the different ways that technology can be used uh, to help them be more competitive. Uh, we did an assessment, we helped them create that blueprint, and now we are implementing the technologies with them. And that's just one project, and we're doing, you know, anywhere from 30 to 40 of those at a time, and that's obviously going to continue to ramp as we continue to scale. So it brings sort of assets, experience, people, and familiarity with technology and equipment to a lot of companies that are smaller who, you know, maybe on their own don't have that capacity or the ability to really right. investigate it the way I think they can... And uh, New York State is paying all of the costs of this project? Yes. Um, and how is EWI paid, or how are they compensated for their efforts here? So this is a, oh. a, we have a, oh, sorry, go ahead, Chris. Go ahead, go ahead, Michael, sorry. No problem. Uh, I was going to say, we have a fee-for-service uh, model that allows us to you know, continue towards a path towards sustainability. Um, so we work with these manufacturers, um, and we have both a membership engagement model, which provides kind of outsource innovation resources to them on demand, as well as do projects, um, which range from, you know, one-day projects to multi-month and sometimes over a year-long projects, depending on the company and depending on the needs. 
So at this point, because it's a couple years old, the revenue exclusively from the client base doesn't cover all the expenses of the operation. So it was originally intended and it's been implemented as intended um, to use some of the Buffalo Billion to really seed the operation and get it going. The ultimate goal in a couple of years is to be more, if not totally self-sustaining, because they continue to, I think they're somewhere close to 50% now. And, you know, that's a big change from month one when it was 0%. So I think they've, you know, established a great reputation in the area. Um, but this is a big asset for manufacturers in the region. And there's lots of ways to grow, uh, you know, your economy in a region. You can't always, you know, you can attract businesses in, but also helping your sort of indigenous companies grow and survive in a tough competitive environment is an important sort of component of success. That's what was driving this from the get-go. Any other um, questions uh, for Chris or Michael on this from the directors? Any comments from the public on this item? Is there a motion to approve? Second. Thank you. Is there a second, Hilda? Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? None. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Megan uh, Taylor's up from the Mid-Hudson region. And Megan, you've got two items. Yes, I do. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the board and commissioners of SE. So I am presenting today a $2.5 million Priority Project Regional Council Fund grant from 2012 for the Center for Discovery's Regional Assessment Center capital project in the hamlet of Hurleyville, town of Thompson in Sullivan County. The Center for Discovery will invest uh, $31.9 million to construct five homes that will serve children and adults with autism and severe developmental disabilities and medical complexities, creating 231 uh, full-time jobs. In addition, the Center for Discovery will rehab various buildings in the hamlet of Hurleyville to provide supplemental services, a maker's lab, and other day and educational programs to expand research, intervention, and residential services. Patrick Dollard at the helm of the Center for Discovery as CEO has built this organization from a fledgling facility of 30 employees to more than 1,400 employees to date. As an anchor institution and employer in the hamlet and town and county, the Center for Discovery contributes a total of more than $184 million in economic impact for New York State and is one of the largest providers of services in its field. To date, the Center for Discovery has created 209 FTEs and they are projected to hit the expected 231 job count by January of 2018. This project continues to be of significant regional importance due to its ability to make a significant impact uh, upon the financial and social costs of autism and other disabilities. And the Center for Discovery has completed the majority of the construction of the homes and Maker's Lab and continues to be of significant um, importance once again. And the project aligns very closely with the Regional Council's live and work strategy creating high-wage opportunities for people in the region and assisting in the revitalization of downtown Hurleyville. And the second is um, Hudson River Housing. So um, I am presenting today a $850,000 Regional Council Capital Grant Fund from 2014 for Hudson River Housing, downtown revitalization and job creation project in the city of Poughkeepsie in Dutchess County. Hudson River Housing invested uh, just a uh, over $6 million to renovate the former Poughkeepsie Underwear Factory into a 21,000-square-foot, three-story mixed-use development with 15 units of affordable housing as well as commercial enterprise space. Hudson River Housing will create 16 jobs um, and job trading opportunities in public space to welcome city residents and visitors. Hudson River Housing, founded in 1982, is a not-for-profit uh, not organization that develops, rehabilitates, and operates emergency, transitional, and permanent housing for low-income and homeless individuals and families in Dutchess County. The organization also provides supportive services intended to aid residents in achieving and maintaining stable and long-term housing. The renovations to the factory, which is on the National Register of Historic Places and employed 42 construction workers during the course of the project, was completed in March of 2017. In terms of full-time jobs, eight of the 16 have been created by Hudson River, ha Hudson River Housing to date, and this project aligns with the Regional Council's plan to invest in downtown revitalization, historic preservation, infrastructure improvements, and increase access to affordable housing and stimulate job creation. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. 
Okay, any questions for Megan Joyce on these projects? Yeah, Sorry, just, then Hilda. Just briefly, I just noticed that the ESD grant here for this project is substantially larger than the HCR grant. And I'm just wondering why we're paying the major part of this um, project. Was this a um, priority project, um, Megan? Yes, it was. Okay. You realize at HCR, I'm going to be asking the reverse question. Yeah, <laughs> we do. There are, I mean, I'm on the HCR board, so I do notice that there are projects that we, we're both supporting. Their, their grants, they don't have access to some of the resources through these regional councils um, on some of these projects. But they do have, like, it feels like uh, community block development community development grant funds and stuff and of, of a sm smaller um, limits. But there are, there are several projects where both HCR and ESD are being supported, for sure. In a project like this, how is this, how are the, all of these different entities coordinate, all of these different financing sources coordinated? Is that done by the developer, or do we play a role in that They're also? They're generally putting together the whole stack. They're trying to figure out how to bring the financing together, and they've got any number of sources. Um, so that's one of their primary roles, I would say. Megan, I mean, would you say ESD is involved in the whole financing stack? No, I mean, we, I think we're, you know, to my understanding, we're aware of it um, and obviously are in, you know, close communications with the developers. But to say that we assist in the, the actual, you know, um, collaboration and, and kind of coordination of that, uh, it really is more to Howard, Howard, to your point, on the developer to ensure that they have the financing available. But also one of the reasons why this project was, um, you know, scored so highly for ESD as well is that this, the, the former Poughkeepsie Underwear Factory was a, was a staple in the city of Poughkeepsie for many, many years before it became a completely blighted and dilapidated building that was more of an eyesore and safety hazard than anything. And Hudson River Housing, who has done tremendous work throughout the region, not only in Poughkeepsie, but in many other, in many other counties throughout the Mid-Hudson, um, you know, really embarked upon this project. And not only was the downtown revitalization piece a major aspect of this, there's a tremendous amount of commercial enterprise space at this facility now. Um, I've had that, I've actually had the opportunity to go and visit it. They have done a fantastic job. Uh, there is a, a, you know, there really is just a, um, an energy around this facility now. Uh, there's a commercial kitchen downstairs where they're doing uh, workforce training and uh, really bringing the community back together within the city of Poughkeepsie. Um, so, you know, from, from ESD's perspective and from the regional council's perspective, it really hit all of our, um, all of our core strategies, which is why it was, it was scored so high and why it received the funding from us in the beginning. Oh. Is one more question. On the, uh, I realize that the uh, affordable units are a relatively small part of this project. Um, but i um, just concerned about what kind of requirements or restrictions there are. On the, uh, I assume those are rental units. Yep. Um, what kind of uh, restrictions there are on um, the rents that can be charged, the income groups that it's targeted to, et cetera? I mean, that those, they have to follow the requirements of uh, HCR on low income housing. I'm assuming they're getting low income well, housing. Well, so I'm wondering which program. Yeah, no, they're getting some, I think, low income housing tax credits ah, potentially. Okay. And so those come with specific guidelines in terms of, right. depending on the program you're in, percentage of median income. I created the that. program for New York City. Oh, okay. Well, then you know it well. <laughs> I know how it works. And when, would you say that uh, these projects kind of go through uh, a filter as we look at the financing stack around sort of viability or, uh, you know, doability for these projects, or we depend on? In, in the front end of the project? Yeah, at what point do we get involved with, you know, how viable is the project? Um, well, I think that this particular project came to ESD when they, were, they had a funding gap. Yeah. Um, so they apply through the regional council fund uh, uh, to the CFA process, um, and we help address that with this with this grant. Right. So they had their funding lined up. Yeah, I would say ninety percent. Yeah, ninety percent of it. Okay. Any other questions for anyone, Hilda? I just uh, had a question for Center for Discovery. It's um, is OPWDD contributing anything to this project? Um, 
because they normally, you know, projects like this. What was the question? It, OPWDD, the state agency, oh, contributing anything to this project since, I mean, they normally allocate money for right. Do you know, uh, Megan, if they're getting OPWDD funding? Uh, Howard, I'm so sorry. I couldn't actually hear the question. Can it just be repeated? Yeah. Do you, you know? I do you know if that? they're? Yep. Do you know if they're getting any funding from the state agency OPWDD? If Center for Discovery is. Yes. Um, I do. I believe that they are. Um, I am not sure, though, if they had received OPWDD funding for this particular expansion. Um, so I, I do not. I, I do not believe they did for this expansion. But the overall facility um, that they have, I know that they have received funding in the past. Um, but I do not believe it was for. I do not believe any OPWDD money was for this particular project. Okay. So projects like this in the future will come to us for approval? Well, this or? went through the, did this go through the REDC process? Yes, it did. It was a priority project from back in 2012. Okay. Is this going to continually be known as the Poughkeepsie Underwear Factory? Yeah, what's with the name? For marketing purposes, it <laughs> I, would seem. So it, it, it was the former. It was the former factory where they produced underwear, uh, and I do believe it is. It, it is because uh, they actually just redid um, a beautiful, beautiful signage and everything on the outside of the building. So, which says Poughkeepsie Underwear Factory. <laughs> At least call it lingerie. There you go. <laughs> it's historic, Joyce. It's historic. It's just very accurate historically. All right. Um, good questions. <laughs> Any other questions? I'd just make a quick comment, Howard, that I know firsthand of some of the fine work that the Center for Discovery does to support particularly kids with Great. serious disabilities and, and special needs, and it's quite a center. Great. Thank you for that. Any other questions from directors or comments? Any comments from the public? Is there a motion to approve this item? So Thank you, Derek, Peter. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. Okay. Thanks, Megan. You're welcome. Thank um, you. Mike Reese uh, from Mohawk Valley is with us. He's got a project, High Tech Data Analytics Workforce Hub project. Mike. Good afternoon, Howard and uh, ESD board members. Uh, I'm asking the directors uh, to approve a $500,000 working capital grant from the Economic Development Purposes Fund to the Re SUNY Research Foundation on behalf of SUNY Polytechnic Institute. The grant will be used for a portion of the cost of workforce training and development program at SUNY Poly's Advanced Manufacturing Performance Centers in Marcy and Albany. ESD funds will be used to purchase contracted services from New York Wired for Education, Inc. to develop and pilot launch a high-tech data analytics workforce hub with additional ESD funding being used for staff focused on curriculum development and working with businesses. Third-party funds will be used to maintain fiscal resources for in-person training as well as pay for licensing and various training curricula. New York Wired for Education will provide custom development of its metrics learning platform for targeted employers such as Dan Foss, Silicon Power, and Edwards Vacuum. In addition, companies such as Global Foundries or when the Marcy site attracts a chip manufacturing company um, or other advanced manufacturing companies can also use this workforce tool for their employment recruiting efforts. The total project cost is estimated to be $3,211,550 and ESD's grant will provide the required match for a $1.25 million grant approved by the U.S. Department of Commerce Economic Development Administration. The ESD grant will also leverage $780,000 of industry investment and $681,000 of SUNY poly in-kind investment. The project completion date is December 2018. However, in order to begin drawing down the federal EDA grant, SUNY Poly is asking for ESD to provide its final approval for the grant. SUNY Poly would like to make sure the EDA grant is active and underway prior to the start of the new federal fiscal year, which is October 1st, 2017. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Mike, we uh, did some diligence with the companies, as you recall, just to um, you know, see what the demand was for the end user. Can you describe that at all? Uh, 
I'm sorry, I didn't hear that question, Howard. You know, we had done some diligence um, with the companies that were going to take advantage of this workforce product. Can you, were you familiar with that diligence? Can you describe it at all? Yes, we contacted both Danfoss Silicon Power and Edwards Vacuum. Uh, both are interested in using it. Uh, Danfoss primarily for recruitment. Um, Edwards Vacuum for not only the recruitment portion, but uh, but also the data analytics portion of the of the projects. Okay. A any other any questions or comments from the directors on this item? Is there any comment from the public on this item? Is there a motion to approve? Well, Thank you, Derek. Second, Second. Hilda. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Thank you very much. Uh, Mike, Joe Roman is with us, and he has an item from the Southern Tier region. Joe. Great. Thank you. Good afternoon. We are requesting that the board directors approve a capital grant from the Economic Development Fund of $500,000 to Midwestern Pet Foods. Uh, that will be used for a portion of the cost for them to purchase and acquire the 150,000 square foot former uh, Hagen Pet Foods manufacturing facility uh, in Waverly, New York. Uh, that would include all buildings, include the property, machinery, and also the inventory. Uh, the new company will also purchase uh, some additional equipment, furniture, fixtures and equipment, and also uh, the facility will need uh, a few minor upgrades as well. Uh, the project will retain 40 full-time employees going to create 10 new full-time jobs. The total capital investment for the project is approximately $9.9 million. Uh, this family-owned business, uh, Midwestern Pet Foods, founded in 1985, manufactures dry dog cat food, has seen steady growth, and this is their third uh, acquisition of a manufacturing facility in the country. It distributes its products, including sport, sports mix, pro-pack, wholesomes, and earth board brands. Uh, throughout the United States, and it's also in, uh, which surprised me, 72 foreign countries. So 2015 award uh, and the Southern Tier Regional Council is supportive of this project, and it's also consistent with our plan to support the manufacturing sector. The project is completed, and I'd be glad to answer any questions. Questions for Joe or comments? Any comment from the public? Is there a motion to approve this item? Thank you, Derek. Second. Is there a second? Hilda, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. Okay, thanks, Joe. Are we sure this is healthy pet Thank food? You. Um, yeah, I cannot vouch for it, but I'm sure. <laughs> um, no this to you no <laughs> Kara Longworth um, from Long Island will present the Stony Brook University Next Generation Drug facility project. Kara, I just want to remind you that Newsday is in the room here with you just to put more pressure on you to do a good job. I will be on my best behavior. Uh, good afternoon, all. Uh, the directors are being, re are being requested to approve a $500,000 regional council capital grant for Stony Brook University that has enabled the purchase and installation of a cryoelectronic microscope to enhance scientific research in drug discovery. The equipment has been installed at Stony Brook's Center for Molecular Medicine and will soon be utilized by researchers. Stony Brook University is the region's largest public university and one of the leading research institutions in New York State, and they have invested over $3 million in this project, including renovation of ex existing lab rooms to accommodate the new equipment. They've also hired two new faculty, a PhD as well as a technician. This was a regional council round five priority project supporting Long Island's selected cluster of life sciences and biotechnology. This equipment focuses on areas within drug discovery, including genetics, human disease, and identifying molecular targets for drugs to adhere to. This cryo-electronic microscope enables researchers to study at extraordinarily high resolution micromolecules in their native state without introducing physical changes which other technologies require. Investments like this allow Long Island to remain at the forefront of biomedical and pharmaceutical research, allowing Stony Brook University students to have access to world-class specialized research equipment on a SUNY campus and prepares them well for careers in bio, research, pharma, and medicine. I do want to note that Dr. Sam Stanley, the president of, Sto of Stony Brook, <coughs> is a regional council member, and he has recused himself from all discussions or scoring of this project, uh, as has uh, uh, our co-chair, Kevin Law, he is a member of the SUNY uh, Research Foundation. He's also recused himself of all these matters. 
uh, this project has met the milestone for disbursement. Happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Kara? Any comments or questions from the directors? Well done, Kara. Good job, Kara. You passed. Um, Thank you all. Yeah. Any comments from the public or from Newsday on this item? <laughs> <laughs> all right. None. Is there a motion to approve? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, I'll now ask Kelly Baccarizzo to present the Market New York Grant Program consent calendar. Kelly. Yes, good afternoon, Howard, and to the board. Uh, Market New York has two working capital projects today from round six of the regional council awards that we are requesting approval on. Uh, the first uh, project is a grant of $356,725 that has been awarded to the Hudson River Partners, uh, the DBA for the Thayer Hotel at West Point, located in the Mid-Hudson region. The grantee will use the Market New York funds to develop and implement a regional tourism marketing plan to increase tourism and travel to the Thayer Hotel tourism destination, as well as the other nearby tourism attractions in the Mid-Hudson region. The grantee plans to track and compare package sales and the impact on the regional tourism partners before and after the plan is put into effect to measure the outcome of the marketing plan. Our second project is a grant of $375,091, um, and it was awarded to the New York State Tourism Industry Association. The New York State Tourism Industry Association is headquartered in Pittsburgh, New York, so this project has been designated as a Finger Lakes project but actually it is a statewide focused working capital project. The grantee will use the Market New York funds to develop and put into action an international cooperative marketing campaign together with various New York State tourism partners and Brand USA, which is an organization dedicated to marketing the United States as a premier travel destination. This project seeks to increase international tourism and visitation to upstate New York. And if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Any questions for Kelly on these two Market New York uh, projects? Are you going to have to watch more commercials on TV? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Um, any, um, any others? Any comments from the public? Is there a motion to approve so these moved. two? Thank you, Derek. Um, Joyce, Second. all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Okay, Kelly, thanks. Um, Simone uh, is with us and she'll present the August non-discretionary projects consent calendar. Simone. Thank you. Good afternoon. For the director's consideration... Someone has to get Simone the microphone, okay, if she got... That's better? Yeah. Okay. For the director's consideration today, we have one non-discretionary $12,290,000 grant to the Great Neck Water Pollution Control District for the cost of construction and renovations to its operations in East Shore and Great Neck. The district is a special commissioner-run district within the town of North Hempstead that operates a wastewater treatment plant designed for a daily flow of 5.3 million gallons of water a day. It has undertaken three upgrades to its operations, the first involving construction of a 2,500 square foot grease receiving station, which will support the demand for electricity and heat in the facility and will be the first of its kind in the state to use cooking grease to power facility operations. The second component involves construction of a microturbine, the third of its kind to be added to the microturbine cogeneration facility, and finally, the district made upgrades to its anaerobic digesters, doubling the present methane production and tripling the amount of gas storage at the facility. The upgrades will continue to protect natural resources while maximizing the facility's energy production, improving generation of electricity by 50% and heating by 100%. Thank you. I can take any questions. Okay, thanks, Simone. Um, any questions or comments from directors on this non-discretionary item? I'm just curious yeah. why this kind of project comes to us rather than to, an, you know, environmental protection or to... Um, I just, I think sometimes our familiarity with administering grants, it's, it's not that our, we particularly uh, have expertise in these water projects, but I think they get, we get slotted in for grants administration and things of that nature. So do we actually then oversee this also? To some extent, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're responsible for what happens yep. to it. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we will be making disbursements at the end of the construction of these, um, of each of the projects I mentioned, and there will be design and construction oversight. And that's being done by this agency? Yes. That's what it, yeah. Other questions or comments? Any comments from the public? Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Thank you. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, Simone. Uh, Brian Keel will present a New York State Innovation Venture Capital Fund item. Good afternoon. Uh, the New York State Innovation Venture Capital Fund is requesting approval of an investment of up to $500,000 in CityMart, a company based in New York City that provides procurement and workflow management software for city government employees. CityMart originated as a government consulting firm that has developed a unique pro problem-based approach to government procurement. On average, cities that work with CityMart achieve a 10 times improvement in their RFP response rate and achieve savings of up to 80% on, on solving their city's problems. The company has validated its methods and with consulting clients and is now developing a software platform that will allow it to sell its government customers, uh, serve its government customers at a larger scale. An investment in the company fits well with our fund's focus on public sector innovation and government technology. The City Mart opportunity was originally introduced to us by one of our co-investors and another one of these um, public sector innovation companies. City Mart was originally founded in Europe but has chosen to relocate to New York and is committed to staying in the state and scaling its team here. Currently, this company is raising $1.5 million in convertible debt, which we are planning to invest a total of $500,000 in. Proceeds from the round were being used to build up their software development team hire additional staff and other functions, and continue to develop the software platform and achieve product milestones over the next 12 months. Any questions on the uh, proposal? Questions for Brian on this uh, investment? Yeah, I just want to make sure I understand. So we are providing both debt and equity in this project? It's a convertible debt that converts to equity when they, oh, okay. and the company does a, an equity financing. We've done these types of uh, bought these yeah, types of securities in other situations. Um, and because it's part of the um, Innovation Venture Capital Fund, we also would benefit from any upside in the company, is that correct? Correct. We, are, we would be equity shareholders, and if, as the company's value grows, the value of our investment grows. Good for us. <laughs> and then it doesn't, it has to achieve a certain threshold of investment before it converts, right? I mean, it's possible they're not successful raising the capital. We, we would only close on this if they yeah. raise the full one and a half, okay. and then it converts, um, th th this debt converts if they raise yep. another round of equity financing. That's typically the way these are structured. Down the road. Correct. Converts automatically or, or at our option? Uh, it converts, um, there's certain conditions that need to be met um, for it to convert, and the pricing on that, there's a cap on the maximum price that we have to convert at, and we always get at least a 20% discount to the pricing of the next round. Okay. Any other questions from directors or comments on this venture item? Comments from the public? Is there a motion to approve? Thank you. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Uh, Samantha Baldock will present the first of our administrative actions, which relates to planning services for the Downtown Revitalization Initiative. Sam. Thanks, Howard. The directors are being requested to authorize separate contracts with 10 consulting firms that will provide planning and project development services to the 10 downtown communities designated as part of the Round 2 of uh, the Downtown Revitalization Initiative. These consulting firms include Bergman Associates, BFJ Planning, Cameron Engineering and Associates, Elon 3 Consulting, HKS Architects, HRNA Advisors, Labella Associates, Stantec Consulting Services, Urban Strategies, and VHB Engineering. Each consultant will be retained for a period not to exceed one year, with all services expected to be completed by the end of April 2018 and each contract will not exceed 300000 totaling $3 million for all 10 contracts. As in round one, the New York State Department of State will manage the consultants in partnership with HCR and ESD. Also similar to last year, participating communities were nominated by the state's 10 regional economic development councils and were chosen based on the downtown's potential for transformation. Each community will receive $10 million of state funding, and this is inclusive of the before mentioned $300,000. Each consultant will work with a local planning committee to prepare a strategic investment plan that identifies 
key catalytic projects to advance the community's vision for revitalization, and these strategic investment plans will be expected to leverage additional public and private investments. And on the phone, we have two colleagues from the Department of State that can help answer any questions. Um, Sarah Crowell, who is from the Office of Planning and, De and um, Development, and Keisha Santiago, who is the new Depart Deputy Secretary of State who just joined the team uh, from the governor's office. Okay. Um, just to uh, refresh people's memory, we, these DRI, Downtown Revitalization Initiatives, are a partnership and part ESD is involved. Regional councils are actively involved. We sort of serve as executive directors, in essence, of the regional councils. Department of State is also involved, right, in running these DRIs and they have urban, they bring some resources to the table around urban planners and then we're hiring urban planners to help these regions put together more robust plans, yeah. right? And so it's a good combination between state and ESD. We all, we both sort of have our um, engagement with this project. There's quite a positive piece in the Times about a DRI grant to Oneonta. Yeah. Yeah, it was, um, I was wowed that the Times went up to Oneonta. That was good to see. <laughs> and, uh, they actually knew where it was. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> So that was great. Um, I was glad to see them shine a light on this project and, you know, how important it is we talk about downtown revitalization, particularly upstate, um, you know, where a lot of these cities have uh, languished and where they have a hard time recruiting or keeping people. So it was good to see them trying to spotlight on that because I think it's an important part of the governor's strategy. Um, I don't know if any of the folks on the phone want to uh, add their two cents to uh, Sam's uh, presentation or not, or just take any questions if the directors have any. I think Sam did, a, did a, a pretty thorough job, so we'll just take questions if you have any. Okay, any questions from directors? Any comments from the public? Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Thank you. Uh, great. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. Thank you, everyone. Um, Michael Avolio will present an item related to the approval of the pre-qualified real estate development and planning related consultants list. Michael. Thank you. Good afternoon. The directors are being asked to approve a list Michael, of you just got to move that a little closer to you. You got it. Is that better? Yep. All righty. The directors are being asked to approve a list of pre-qualified real estate development and planning related consultants. The previous two lists, which were approved by the board in 2013, are due to expire in August and September of this year. This updated list consolidates the various practice areas covered by previous lists and makes available to the corporation real estate and planning related firms that have been selected through a competitive solicitation. Approval of this list allows EST to retain firms for often complex real estate development and planning projects across the state in a more efficient and timely manner than issuing an RFP. The list to be approved consists of the following 11 services. One, real estate planning and advisory services. Two, financial and economic analysis. Three, architecture and design. Four, construction and engineering. Five, phase one environmental site assessment. Six, environmental review. Seven, infrastructure advisory services. Eight, transportation planning. Nine, historic preservation and adaptive reuse. 10 surveyors, and 11 community engagement. Over 100 firms were considered, and the responses were evaluated by 11 committees consisting of three reviewers each, made up of staff from multiple ESD offices. In keeping with ESD's commitment to promoting the participation of minority, women, and veteran-owned businesses, 20% of the firms included on this list are either state-certified service-disabled veteran-owned businesses or a minority or women-owned business enterprise. Based on the review, the real estate development staff recommends approval of the firms listed in Attachment A as pre-qualified in the indicated areas of expertise. Please note that we need to make a minor correction to the pre-qualified list under two subcategories, construction and engineering and historic preservation and adaptive reuse. At the request of the respondent firm, we will be changing the original name provided WSP USA Inc. to WSP USA Buildings Inc. A copy of the corrected materials will be filed with the records of the corporation. 
Upon approval, it is rec recommended that this list remain in effect for four years. Please note that today's action does not commit the corporation to any expenditure of funds. It simply continues a pre-qualification process that allows the corporation to procure services with greater agility. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Michael. Any um, questions or comments from directors on this? Yes, so Derek. So you already vetted all these firms? Uh, correct. We did a determination of responsibility for all the firms. Other questions? Sorry, other questions or comments? Any comments from the public? Is there a motion to approve Move. this item? Thank you, Derek. Is there a second? Second. second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thanks, Michael. Uh, Julian Handler will present a request for authorization to enter into an MOU with the New York State Thruway Authority regarding diversity compliance. Julian. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Julian, the microphone. Is that better? Yep. Great. Uh, today we are seeking authorization to enter into an agreement with the New York State Thruway Authority to provide supplier diversity management for our largest capital projects. Uh, Thruway Authority has extensive experience in meeting supplier diversity goals on multi-billion dollar capital projects and mo most recently met a $314 million goal on the new Tappan Zee Bridge project. As a reference, our two largest capital projects each have supplier diversity goals that exceed $400 million. Managing a supplier diversity program on these projects is much different than managing typical ESD projects. It requires the ability to break down bid packages into smaller awards where minority and women businesses and service disabled veterans can compete for the awards. It requires managing relationships with prime contractors, their subs, and tracking subcontracting sometimes down to the third and fourth tier. As well, it requires a familiarity with design-build contracting processes and procedures. Current staff at ESD does not have similar experience managing these projects, and we're looking to tap into the knowledge and experience contained at the Thruway Authority to manage to these goals. The term of this agreement will be for five years, and the fee for these services is not to exceed $950,000, which will be funded through the ESD subsidiary corporations. Uh, and for your reference, we are joined by Tracy Mitchell from the Thruway Authority, she's over here. Uh, if you have any questions for us, uh, I'm available. Thank you. Okay, fabulous. Um, are there any questions um, regarding this contract, in essence, for services with the Thruway Authority to help us better implement MWBE on larger infrastructure projects? Good idea. Tracy, do you want to say anything to the project at all, to your, your I'm skills? I'm happy to be here. Um, I'll be here three days a week and two days still at the tap and see it. And for all of you, the first fair will be opening on next Thursday. All right. Fantastic. Very good. Any uh, comments? Sorry, any comments or questions from directors? Any comments from the public on this item? Is there a motion to approve? Move. Move. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, I think that's our meeting. We have covered all the items. Thank you all for, again, your flexibility on the schedule and for everyone's participation. And we'll see you next time around. Motion to adjourn. So moved.